everyone ham here today i thought i'd do a quick start guide for using the pimax crystal with wrc rally so i've been testing this out for a few hours with different settings so i thought i'd do a sort of quick start guide on how to set this up there's a couple of different ways you can configure this and i'll go through some of the graphic settings that i've picked now i'm using a rtx 4090 and an amd 7800x 3d uh, so you'll have to adjust the settings according to your spec but that's to give you an idea of the uh, the system that I'm running this on so once you've got your crystal plugged in you'll need to open up the Pimax Crystal Play software which you've got here and there's two different ways you can get this to work so one's via Pimax XR which is the open XR runtime for Pimax or you can run it via Steam and using Steam's OpenXR runtime built into that. So if you've got um, a native Steam headset such as a Valve Index or um, the new Big Screen Beyond headset, then obviously that's a native Steam VR headset. So you'd connect via Steam and use the built-in OpenXR runtime that's in Steam. However, if you've got another headset such as a Meta headset, then you really want to use the native OpenXR runtime in most cases. So in this example, we've got the Pimax XR runtime. So usually using the headset's native OpenXR runtime is the more efficient way to go. It allows you to bypass SteamVR and there's a performance hit of usually running SteamVR. However, in the case of WRC, I've noticed the performance is about the same, if not potentially slightly better on SteamVR or going via SteamVR. Um, so that's the way I'd recommend you actually run this game. However, for other racing games such as iRacing and the set of course Competizione, um, you want to run this via the Pimax XR runtime and bypass Steam altogether. Uh, note for a set of course Competizione, you'll need to use the open composite uh, conversion tool to allow you to run it via OpenXR. So if you want to use eye tracking on the Pimax Crystal, for WRC, you can try it, but it is very temperamental. You can tick the checkbox here, allow use of eye tracker for Pimax Crystal. So have that ticked. And then in the OpenXR toolkit, you'll need to have this enabled. Now, this is why I said it's temperamental because sometimes this works and sometimes it crashes. So my suggestion to get this working is start this in safe mode, reset all the settings if you've changed this for your other games to default and then come back and you can try it again outside of safe mode and then you can go into the foveated rendering option in the OpenXR toolkit and enable eye tracking. So I managed to get this to work for some uh, time trials. It was hit and miss, sometimes it would crash after, after the event. Um, so your mileage will vary. It gave me between five and seven FPS boost. So it is good when it works, but the problem is it's very temperamental. So overall, I can't recommend you use it, but if you do want to check out eye tracking, then this is the way you would do it. If we want to run this through Steam, and it's probably the way I'd suggest you go at the moment, is you want this set to Steam VR. Alternatively, don't install Pima XR runtime. And what this will do is this will set Steam VR as the default Open XR runtime. And you can check this by going into your Steam settings. So just right click the little VR st for Steam option here and go into settings. And then it brings up a bunch of settings here, which you can actually bring up in VR. So if I move it to the middle so you can see it. Under Open XR, it says current Open XR runtime Steam VR. If I change this back to Pimax XR and then click on something else and come back, you can see it's changed here. So this little radio button is a picker between the OpenXR runtime that you want to use. Keep in mind if you've got another headset such as a MetaQuest, then you may have that defaulted as the default OpenXR runtime. So you just want to make sure you've got the right one selected. Um, so if you've only got a Pimax, then you can just use this radio button here and you'll see it's changed back to SteamVR here. If you've got other headsets, there's this XR runtime picker for OpenXR, which is quite handy. And this lets you pick between the different headsets. So if you've got a HP Reverb G2, you can quickly make it active here. Same for Oculus. Keep in mind in each of these headsets, native applications, there's usually an option to make this 
had set the default open XR runtime, but uh, quite a little handy tool if you've got a few different headsets and you want to switch between them. So before we jump into the Steam VR settings, I'll just show you the Pimax Crystal settings that I've got selected. So if you hit device settings here, then you can see I've got this set to 72 Hertz lab mode. So to get the most out of the resolution of the crystal, I recommend you try running this at 72 Hertz. You could try 90, but you're gonna to have to lower the resolution and the game settings down. It seems to run pretty well at 72 and looks fairly decent. So that's what I suggest you go for. Uh, I've got eye tracking ticked for if I'm using it via the OpenXR Runtime and Pyramax XR, but it won't make a difference for SteamVR because it's not compatible in that mode. If we then click on the Games tab, you'll see there's a render quality setting. So this is similar to the MetaQuest render resolution. So this is where you want to change um, the default render scale. So there's, there's three different options here, minimum, balanced, and maximum. Or well, if you click on customize and default, one is like the default native render resolution. If you were to use this directly with Pimax XR, not use SteamVR, then I recommend you, you drop this down to about 0 0.8, which is 80% of the native resolution, and then jump into the game settings. Alternatively, if you're running through SteamVR, then you can leave this back at 100%, and then in SteamVR's settings per application, you can drop the render resolution down to about 70% or so. This option here, if you're wondering dynamic foveated rendering, this doesn't actually apply to open XR games. This is for Steam VR games or open VR games. And I don't believe it even supports DirectX 12 games, even if it's a Steam VR game uh, such as WRC. So this actually won't work. It will work for some games, but not for WRC. So the only way you can get eye tracking working is via the Pimax XR runtime. So next up, I'll show you the Steam VR settings that I've got configured. So it should say 72 Hertz motion smoothing. I've got turned off render resolution set to custom. And this is the global setting is at hundred percent. So this resolution here will reflect what we've picked in the Pimax play app. So um, that, that's the default render resolution set to one. And then if you want to set a resolution per application, which is what we're going to do, we we'll said WRC is our top one. And then I've got that set to 74%, which is 3708 by 4388. And that's the only setting I've got set there. Um, advanced super sampling filtering, I've got that off. So you can turn that on if you want it to be a bit smoother. It, it basically smooths out some of the jaggies, um, but I prefer it to be a little bit sharper in the distance. But there isn't much between the two. And that's about it for the Steam VR settings. So if we just jump into the game, I'll show you what game settings I've got. So the first thing we'll look at is the VR settings. Now I've got all of these set to off. Uh, crash vignette, I've got set to zero. And then the custom hidden area mask, I actually got this set to the same as what I have with the Quest. So if I toggle this on and off, you can see on the screen, it um, basically crops the edges. So it reduces the FOV. So this, if I reduce this further, you'll see how much it's shrinking. And I think 95 is about as far as I'd want to go. Um, if you want it a bit wider, you can uh, adjust it here, but bear in mind, there's going to be a performance impact. So I've gone for 95 and then under basic graphics, I've got the resolution, which is the spectator screen set to 1920 by 1080. Now you can obviously set this lower and in theory, the lower this is the better performance you'll get. However, I think you need to restart the game to uh, appreciate the impact because I found even when I've lowered this from 1920 to 1080 to a lower resolution, performance actually degraded. I'm not sure why. So just keep in mind, if you do change this even lower, you may need to restart the game. Uh, I've got it in windowed mode. 
anti-aliasing quality but set to low similar to how I have it on the Quest 3 um, basically I just don't like having the aliasing any higher than that it just tends to look a bit smeared anisotropic filtering I've got that set to 2 and the foveated rendering I've got that cranked up to maximum so it's sharper in the middle and then the resolutions reduced on the outside to give us that performance boost and then upscaler I've got that set to off so generally I didn't like the look of these I, I did find if you wanted it to be less twinkly in the distance another approach is to set the steam VR render resolution to something like 110 percent and then I found Fidel fidelity FX on quality uh, works pretty well so it maintained the, um, the similar kind of performance as having it on 74% render resolution, but um, with the with it set to 110% render resolution with Fidelity, Fidelity FX on, we got the performance and it also smoothed it out a bit, but I, I didn't like the slight loss of detail in the distance. So I generally prefer to have no upscaler and have it set to 74% render. Right, under advanced graphics I lowered this slightly from a quest free setup so because we're running such a high resolution some of these have a bit more of a bigger impact compared to it being on lower resolution so I'll just quickly go through these so shadows medium um, I won't read them all actually I'll, I'll just go through them slowly so you can see what I've picked uh, motion blur obviously you want to have off for VR change these obviously but th this is what I found gives me a uh, fairly decent visuals and reasonable performance so we're still able to hit the 72 Hertz okay that's it for the quick settings guide for the Pimax crystal on WRC hopefully you found it useful if you did don't forget to leave a thumbs up if there's any other tips or tricks that you know of leave them in the comments below it will help other viewers out all right until next time bye for now